As a quick introduction to get us ready to sketch for our next assignment, we're doing a fantasy creature similar to our fantasy landscape. It will require at least five different references that we put together, but we're doing a creature from head to toe. These are some nice slides to give you an example of the professional process of concept design for creatures, which has a lot to do with digital painting and illustration as well as compositing. But it's um, a past student example, final presentation on the art of the artist R.J. Palmer. And R.J. Palmer was the, the lead character designer for the, the live action Pokemon detective, Pikachu Pokemon detective movie. And was tasked with the difficult task of making these kind of cartoonish creatures into fully believable 3D creatures, right? And how do you do that? Well, you composite with existing textures in the real world. And so we're gonna be learning how to do that. But before you can do that, you have to actually understand a little bit of the anatomy of creatures so that you know what kind of reference you need to get. So we start this a little bit differently. And these are great slides to look at. You see the depth to which he tries to understand the musculature, the skeleton, how things might connect. He started his work. This is how he got his first job was he, he posted this, which was just his in-depth you know, understanding of a T-Rex in all the different layers. And he did that by compositing different photos of bones and different photos of muscles and then stretching them and making them match his own model. So that is creature concept work. So what we're going to do is we're going to, just like we did with our landscape, it's all going to feel pretty familiar. Instead of being inspired by background animation, I like to get inspired by Pokemon. There are so many Pokemon, and many of them are well-designed. Not all of them. <laughs> but what they do well is just from their little Pokédex illustration or their card illustration, their silhouette, just the shape they make, already tells you a lot about their anatomy. So even ones that look like a blob, <laughs> the, the, the shape tells you where their arms would be, where their rib cage would be, where their neck would be. And that's what we need to do for our sketching. We don't want to just sketch it as a stick figure we want to understand where the skeletal structures are. So it doesn't mean you need to be great at drawing to do it. So what I'm going to do is just pick a Pokemon to be inspired by. I'm thinking of my fantasy landscape, which is kind of jungle-ish, desert-like. Desert and oh, I don't know. What can I have fun doing? I like, like these little rat-like ones. So I'm not even going to go outside to a Pokédex, so I think I have one linked here. But I'm just going to do a screen grab. And I'll take this one. And sometimes I'll combine multiple Pokémon. Of course, you're not just trying to recreate Pokémon here. But being inspired. So this is like a rat with some spikes. Maybe some flora. And that will be my inspiration. So then what's the next step? I need to draw a sketch that kind of understands the anatomy of that Pokemon. So this is a past student example. They chose this Pokemon and then they tried to understand how could they use real life things to make up those textures. But first they have to sketch it knowing where the head is, the spine, the joints, so they know the angle of the different features. Always trying to communicate that silhouette. So you can see this in past semesters, and I give you kind of the step here of how, how you might do it, because sketching this is kind of tricky, right? But that's how we'll, we'll go about it. This was from last semester. So if I'm sketching this inspiration, and you just can sketch by hand or digitally, I'm going to have to sketch digitally just so I can show you. So I'm going to open up that screenshot I just took with Photoshop. And I'm just going to create some canvas size next to it.
And I'm just going to fill that empty space up with white. So you can see what I sketch. And then I already have my tablet plugged in. And I should be able to do this in just a few minutes. But sketching is really going to help you find the reference you need. And if you don't sketch it out first, you're going to end up with something that looks really kind of flat and clunky. Meter an, excellent. All right, so I'll sketch first with this kind of reddish color. I'm just going to turn my brush down. And the first thing you want to do is we're going to use basic shapes like we've talked about, basic circles, basic wedges. I want to find the skull. Most Pokemons are vertebrates. <laughs> I recommend doing a vertebrate. They make a little bit more sense. But insects can even be thought of as vertebrates. They have the exoskeleton. You can find how things relate. But the skull is always going to be the focal point, And then the eyes on the skull are going to help you understand what angle the skull is facing, right? So we have a skull that's facing up here, and then we have what's called a mandible, which is the jaw that attaches. Okay, then he's got these big ears. That's a big part made of different wedges and triangles. And I'm thinking, oh, what could that be? And then he's got almost no neck. So once you have the skull, you're going to draw the spine, what runs behind the back of the skull into the tailbone, and sometimes the tail. And then on the spine, where you put the rib cage, which is sometimes bigger than the skull, most of the time, mine's almost equal to the skull, the rib cage is going to tell you the length of the neck. So if it's an extended neck, like a giraffe, or a really short neck, like a, a lizard, you want to understand that space there because that's a transition that pivots between the skull and the rib cage. Then our arms connect in front of the rib cage through the collarbone that connects our shoulder joints. That's true on humans. It's true on creatures of any size. So I find the joint and I draw the joint like little baseballs to show the space where the joint needs to be able to rotate. And then I'll draw the legs. And I'm actually going to draw the legs with an elbow joint, even though that's not obvious in the Pokemon. And then this Pokemon kind of has cloven hooves. So it's looking more like a pig now. But that might I might be able to use pig ears. I might make a little note of that. And so that's how you'll sketch. Then you do the pelvis. This is a tiny pelvis. And then this has a little haunch for the back leg. And then again, the, the cloven hooves. Take care. So coming to class with that sketch will really help you know what you're looking for. And I'll, I'll talk it all through and do it all in class. So once I'm doing this, I start thinking, what animals might give me these? And that's what I'll pick up next time. Till then.